I've tried to talk to Reggie about this. I'm wondering he if won't. you can... He won't. I'm wondering if you can help me. You recently finished a Dungeons & Dragons game... Ah. ..that went on for three years. Yes, the uh, rod of seven parts. Sure. <laughs> how does it go on for three years? How is that possible? And how does it end? And why even bother ending at this point? Let me ask you this, James. Do you have the courage to imagine? Yes. <laughs> I absolutely do. Okay. 100% I do. OK, well, then, if you can get to the point where you and, perchance, four to six other grown adults can sit around a table and all try to imagine the same thing, and then whenever there's a contest of anything that you want to happen, roll them bones, then you can play Dungeons & Dragons for three years. <laughs> We just, basically, we told, a, we told a fantasy epic akin to Lord of the Rings that is entirely our own and exists only in our minds. So to try and share, oh, here's what happened when Oleus Dawnbreaker finally defeated the Kraken. It's, it's like <laughs> telling someone your dream. You're like, okay, that's neat. It's yeah. so interesting. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So it's like, it's a very, very important story that was told only for the six people that were in our group. I'm, that, very, I'm very proud of that. Well, that is... That's the best way <laughs> anyone has ever explained Dungeons & Dragons to me, because I've never quite got it before, because I people tried. do that thing of trying to explain it. And you're yeah. right, you can't. No, because it's I, just a memory at that point, right? It yeah. always is. But I completely understand the notion of having a shared, creative, imaginary experience with a group of friends that is only happening there and then in that moment there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when it was all done, why, why it went three years is because the story kept going and, like, basically at every moment, we're like, no, let's keep telling it. But how do you end it? How do you...? With some tears. No joke. <laughs> there were some tears at the Seriously? end. Seriously? Yeah, because characters you've known for a long time die or they move on and their stories, their, like, um, uh, epilogue is, like, kind of sad in some ways. And we all, like, <laughs> sat around the table. We met for the fin finale, and we sat around the table, had some drinks, and we're like, ah, remember when in September, you know, and it was Heroes Day? Ah, you know, we, like, <laughs> sh crushed a cup over our stories. But, yeah, you end it because... How we ended it is because we got the seven parts of the rod. <laughs> I and love we, it. De we defeated Mishka, the spider, the spider queen. I mean... Well, that was my <laughs> next question. It. I mean, so come yeah, on, you I defeat Mishka. <laughs> Well, that's... James. I get it. OK. I completely get it. So it feels like you don't understand that we defeated Mishka and, and yeah, saved Farron. Yeah, it's You're the seven rods of the, the Kraken. <laughs> You're making fun of me, no, and I'm I can not. tell. No, I'm not. <laughs> I want you to know I'm honestly not, because I genuinely think that's the, that is the best... I think that's... Did it. I successfully pitch a pen and paper role-playing game to you? Genuinely, you did. <laughs> you absolutely did, and I, I never think... thought that was possible. <laughs> Reggie, do you have a question for our guest this evening? <laughs> Uh, I do. Tonight's question goes to... Let's make it for Thomas. All right. Oh, OK. OK. Um, so when you're role-playing, uh, I mean, doing Dungeons & Dragons specifically in, in pen and paper, um, obviously you can use hexagonal stuff, you can use figurines if you want. What is your style of playing? For me, I'm a little bit more intellectual. Like, I like to just describe what my character is doing. I don't really play my character so much. Okay. And how do you navigate the different styles of playing? Oh, it's fascinating. So you're talking about third-person perspective yes. invented by uh, Kierkegaard See, in this is the problem. This yes. is when I was in, and now I'm And, and <laughs> I do a mix. I, do, I go, I, I hybrid play. And uh, this was invented in 1991 by Kurt Cobain, actually, of, of all people. Okay. Uh, where you do a mix of first person, as in, I say this, I do this. Mm -hmm. And also a mix of third person, perchance, using uh, your character's name or describing exactly what you do in the scene, as it were. And of course, you're doing the palm with many fingers, the, <laughs> the symbol of the, uh, of the broken twist, and the thieves' guild. I'm only laughing because it's crazy how precise that is. Um, <laughs> that's absolutely correct. That's how you do it. It's absolutely <laughs> correct.